Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Spiritual Successor, a comedy video game design podcast where we take your lovely ideas from all over the internet and turn them into the next triple A titles. I'm your host, AJ Hart. And I am your other host, Blake Rea. Do you feel bad? Do you feel blue? Do you feel like uh, you need a little, little, little pick-me-up today? Well, I have one tip for you that doctors don't want you to know about. If you're ever feeling down and out, I would recommend Crush 40's Escape from the City by Sonic the Hedgehog from the Sonic Adventure 2 soundtrack. Because I turned that on while me and AJ were just sitting here before the podcast, and I feel prepped. I feel pepped. I feel alive, and I feel good. AJ disagrees with me because he thinks the Shadow of the Hedgehog soundtrack is better, which is well. Okay, now you're putting words wrong. in my mouth. You're cashing <laughs> checks that I don't agree with. All right, if you're coming in, here's the thing: you had that bit, and I was ready to bring in my bit, but you wanted to speak for me, and that's not how we do things around here. Capiche? You were like, oh, I mean, if you're feeling, you, if you need you a little bit of pep in your step, then go ahead before, and play. No. Cr- look, 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 look! They have different. They have different goals. They have different. They are different pieces of yeah, art. Yeah, one's edgy and dumb, goals, and the Blake other one's Raya. a feel-good ska jam. If you were saying, oh, if you want pep in your step, then you should lis- listen to Escape the City by Crush 40. Absolutely. I was thinking to myself as you were saying that, I was like, you know, I Am All of Me is really not that great for like a pep in your step thing, but definitely a great like I need to pump title. up and get shit done kind of track. And I do believe I agree with you. <laughs> Escape the City is a very good pep in your step. I need a good positive energy track. <laughs> I Am All of Me, the titular song from the Shadow the Hedgehog video game, is a great song if you need to listen to something to really put a little bit of oomph in your giddy up. Hey, AJ, you know what AJ, I mean? It's not gonna, you're not going to be smiling while you're doing it, but you're going you're gonna to furl your eyebrows a little bit. You're going to maybe grit your teeth a little bit, and you're going to think to yourself, oh, yeah. <laughs> AJ, oh, I think yeah, I've, I am I, all of me. I think I oh, found yeah. out what our next Twitter poll is going to be. We haven't done one in forever, but it'll be so Which funny. Which song is better? Escape the <laughs> City song or is better? I Am Escape All of the Me? City. I'll put, I'll, here's here's the three options. It's a, who, What song's better? Escape from the City, I Am All of Me, or I've Never Heard of These Fucking Songs Before. <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine that the audio, the Venn diagram of our listenership and people that know both of those songs by name in a perfect mm-hmm. world is a complete circle. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what this reminds me of debating which one's better? The fucking Game of the Year awards happened. And you know how many like four player horde games came out? Like did the trailers? Like you had Dark Tide, you had the sequel like from the team from Left 4 Dead doing their, it's like blood, the, <laughs> blood or the whatever. The spiritual successor. <laughs> God, any t- any, you I know, said it. We can roll credits on the whole. <laughs> we can roll. We can pack it up. We can roll on credits the entire, on the whole podcast. We're done on the whole series. <laughs> on a side note, actually, since you mentioned that, I would love to talk about this on the podcast. I, for the life of me, I didn't realize when you when you came up with a title for spiritual successor. I was like, oh fuck, that's a great name. I didn't. I didn't expect how negatively it would impact my communication to people because anytime I'm talking about like, like let's use the left for dead things like, Hey, yeah, it's the, uh, by the people who did left for dead. It's not the sequel, but it's the spirits. I'm like, I feel like a jackass. I feel like I'm just selling my own stuff in the middle of a, a, of a, well, that's because you can't hear somebody say spiritual successor without you like stopping every, but thing saying, Hey, stop, 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 stop. Wait, wait, wait. You said spiritual successor. You know, that's the name of my podcast that I do. And like, I've been in those conversations with you. We, We'll talk about anything, and if somebody says spiritual success, you're like, it's time to plug. Everybody shut the hell up. It's a t- it's now you're Blake's putting plug words time. in my mouth that seem more damaging than say than <laughs> arguing about Sonic the Hedgehog soundtracks. <laughs> but to go back to your previous segue, a lot of yeah, segues, yeah. lots of tangents. Video yeah. game awards did happen, and I mm-hmm. have to say I'm very upset. Because something really? that we keep on seeing in the something we keep seeing in the awards thing, it happened with the Oscars last year. Is they keep on taking some of our favorite dang award categories and doing them when they're off air at commercial break. You know, they didn't even show us oh, the biggest sword right. award. <laughs> Wait, that's an actual award? No, it's not. Continue with the bit, please. They didn't even show us the biggest sword award. Okay, you I can't. Really you, thought you, that no, it was no, 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 no. You can't complain about something the and then use a, had you two know, people no. in that category this year. <laughs> you when... can't. You can't complain about something and then give a fake piece of evidence. Like that doesn't. It doesn't work <laughs> that way. <laughs> 
<laughs> but no, but no, like doing the commercial thing is weird because it's just like there are people giving their acceptance speeches and shit like that, right? Don't they cut them off like early or just not at all? Because they're just oh, like they're just hey, weren't we gotta... award there weren't awards like thank yous this time around. There was a bunch of categories that they just kind of plastered right through, which mm. felt a little bit weird for me. I'm not yeah. here to make a big scene and stink about the video game awards here. I'm here to talk about the fact that isn't it kind of messed up that there isn't in the video game awards. A whole category about what track has the most banging theme song. <laughs> because I think that Hades should have won that. Hades would have won the most really? banging theme song. Because, like, yeah, dude, because every time I load into that game for like that first little track where I'm like, all right, time to do a run. And that little drum line comes in. See, you know, I'm like, all right, this is the one. This is see, the one I'm going to do it. See, that's and so you know, interesting. Ain't I... no other tracks out there banging like that. Ain't no tracks out there bringing in that kind of heat, giving me that kind I... of energy. I don't know. Like, I actually think I, I did this. Did it come out this year? I don't know. It released on Oculus this year, so I, it might have actually released earlier. But I, I don't. Here's the thing: when I played Hades, I actually the music wasn't really my favorite part. Like it was. Right, good. What do you think? One best should get best song of the year in uh, the video game awards. If I if I am remembering correctly, if it came out this year, I would definitely say Pistol Whip. All of the tracks on the Pistol Whip VR game. Are fucking slap. They I regret slap to inform you, so Pistol hard. Whip was not big enough to be nominated for Jack Diddley hey, shit. Hey, that gets fucking nothing. sucks, dude. Dude, did you know they're doing? <laughs> yeah, because you and I did like the Pistol Whip thing for BF Four forever ago. Did you know they're adding a campaign mode now that you can actually go through an entire like I don't know how long the game is, but it's a whole like cyberpunk themed game. And it's Blake, all rhythm Pistol Whip came so out November seventh, cool. twenty nineteen. Try again. Oh uh, no. Okay. Well, whatever. Uh, yeah, I guess like I can't. I can't name any other games with bitchin' soundtracks right now. Actually, wait. Doom. Doom. Fucking Eternal. What the fuck am I talking all about? Right. That game fucking slapped. Holy shit. Why didn't that not win? Fucking Mick Gordon just delivered. I'll tell you he why actually, it didn't win, no. Blake. I'll tell you exactly why. Because <sighs> the person that was ready, the person that was in the room ready to say Doom should win Best Video Game Award. Was sitting around mm -hmm. thinking, man, but that game last year had a much better soundtrack, and I don't like Doom anymore. See, no, that fucking blows because, like, Mick Gordon <laughs> went... No, no, it legit blows because Mick Gordon went, like, above and beyond. He went to the point where he's like, hey, you know what this, you know what this fucking soundtrack needs? You know what this... On top of these sweet metal licks? We need Mongolian throat singers to just come in and give us the fucking chorus. And he got, like, 40 people, all, like professional metal singers in their field to do metal choruses for his thing. Like there's a whole doc, there's like a whole micro doc on it. And it is so fascinating. I would definitely recommend anybody listen to that. I really like what, okay. What, which thing did win? Hey Blake, I regret to inform you. It sounds like I was talking out of my ass. There is a best score and music category from the video game awards and final fantasy seven remake. Got it. Uh, the final bit's finish. done because I just fact checked myself <laughs> on air, so we're, not, we're legally not allowed to be funny hey, about this anymore. You, you know what's you know what's you know what's good about that though? We're not gonna get blasted on our Discord for getting things wrong again. <laughs> so nice. it, you know, hey, all right, there we go. We got to make an effort to fact check ourselves on the podcast now. <laughs> all right, all right. Before we go to game submissions, here is last week's trailer for Kirby Munch Crunch Deluxe. Spiritual Successor Games Good morning, viewers. It's another bright and beautiful day in Dreamland. The sun is out, the waters are candy sweet, and the air has never been more peaceful. Oh, yes? Oh, it seems our newscopter has picked up the Star Warrior Kirby on a lovely stroll. <laughs> They're so cute. Round body with a cute smile. Look at those pearly... whites? He's walking towards a pack of Waddle Dee Dees, perhaps to play volleyball. The sun is in the perfect position, but his face is contorting, pink lips peeling back to reveal a bear trap of ivory. He's laughing now. The Dees are frozen. They seem to see something we don't. Perhaps Kirby has brought them a gift. AJ is on the scene to tell us more. Thanks, Blake. Happy Sunday, everybody. I'm here with Kirby Cam, bringing you on the floor coverage of our favorite little Star Warrior. Oh my God. He just bit the smallest Waddle D in half. Neon liquid is spraying everywhere. Oh no. Dear viewers, if you can hear me, run. Run for your very lives. His stubby, tiny legs are our only advantage over him. But first, 
But first, a word from our sponsors. Kirby's back in an all-new gritty adventure. Bite, chew, and chomp your way to domination. Murder has never been so sweet. Dear God, I forgot about his incredible sucking power. I can't run. None of us can get away. None of us can. Kirby Munch Crunch Deluxe. Play it now on Game Boy. Hey, everybody, and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that trailer just as much as we had fun making it. It was a, it was a blast. Kind of did a little Night Vale energy there. Um, just want to say thank you to our awesome Patreon member, Warlockus, for submitting their voice to be used at the beginning of it. If you want to submit your voice, Blake, thank check you, us thank out you, on thank Patreon. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for remembering to do that at the top of the show so we didn't have to blast that in right before we did patch notes <laughs> again this week. <laughs> yeah, I know. You and I are pretty – we're just a couple of himbos forgetting Ooh. things. Hey, turn off your fucking phone. Turn off your phone. Sorry. Turn off your phone. Jesus. Amateur um, hour over but, here. Yeah. No – <laughs> this this was a lot of fun and i feel like any role where aj you get to shout in it i feel like just just listening to your takes are like the are the ones i can tell you're most passionate <laughs> about like you go the right after like kirby bit into the dude like you're just like oh oh it's no. a very fun process i actually really <laughs> like doing those little acted out blurbs for the trailers they're a lot of fun blake i have a video mm. game for you <laughs> Okay, hell yeah. Sh give it to me, brother. Can I sip some coffee while you're uh, serenading? Yeah, but it, what voice? if it's too funny? What if it's such a funny submission you spit up all your coffee all over everything? Eh, I'll just put it back in the cup and drink again. This comes to us on Twitter from Robbie Navarro at L Brown Knight. A Dark Souls like game where you are the most powerful being and can kill anything in one hit. But. The bosses are the most squirmiest things ever programmed. Mm. See, this reminds me a lot of our, uh, I forget the name of it, but you and I made a game like this where it was the candy, like, Dark Souls game where, like, it was Guts with a Weed Whacker and the final boss was uh, that, Tom Nook. The, yeah, this was a game where if you were hit by the bosses, you went into ragdoll physics and mm -hmm. could be blasted away but back to the beginning it, of the wasn't game. wasn't it the a, same? Akin to getting over it. No, but wasn't it the same thing, though, where, like, you can, if you hit them once they die? Or is it, like, did they have health bars? I don't really remember. They had full health bars. Uh, for for okay, okay. the players playing it, it still felt like a normal Dark Souls game. But then if you got hit, you were blasted all the way back to the uh, beginning. Thank you so much for remembering okay. our previous work. I don't remember the name of that game. <laughs> this one works different. Okay, okay. This one would be like a Dark Souls game. But what if you... You know those little like... I forget the names of them, but they're like the little like crystal lizards that you have to bash so you get the little upgrade piece. Oh, the squirt, yeah, games. like the the uh, the ethereal gems or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I totally yeah. Remember. They're like the crystal. The they're just crystal lizards. You gotta keep yeah. your eye out for them. What if those were the bosses? What if something that little small and <laughs> Wait, wiggly and squirmy H. was the boss? H. H. And so you on. had like these hyper specific. What's up? Hold on, I have it. Because this is totally a fucking game that should be made because I would get so pissed off playing it. The one mechanic that um that uh about those crystal lizards is they will appear uh, you will walk into a room and you can see them and then they'll just skitter away, but if you if enough time goes by without you attacking them, they actually fade into nothing. What if there was a <laughs> game that worked like uh it worked like dark souls it didn't have like an actual like save slot mechanic it would just checkpoint you um but maybe uh okay fuck that for a second let me forget that um what if you did it to where all of the bosses work the same way you actually had to chase down the bosses and if you didn't hit them in time they actually fade away and you have to reload a save or potentially reload that thing so like all of the bosses will run away from you and if you don't catch them in time guess what they fade away and you can't advance the game they don't come back just and you have to close the whole program <laughs> close the whole game boot it up again load up your previous save and go out again yeah, you have yes to, yes you yes. have to, to fucking turn off the machine what i'm also very interested oh, no. in is have you played those like this is a common thing in character action games where like you'll hit a boss fight where the boss is like flavor is that they're like a super fast person mm -hmm. so when you hit them with your sword the character does like a dodge animation and like they can't get hit and so like no matter how many times you wail on them the character's like whoosh 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 dodge dodge mm -hmm, dodge mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Oh, it's like the um the name. We can the make nameless every king. single boss feel like that. Yeah, it's like what? Did you ever did you ever fight the nameless king in Dark Souls three? <laughs> no, <laughs> you you lucky soul! I wasted so many hours on that and still haven't beaten him. Um, but basically, he's like riding a dragon and he's constantly out of. You can't really attack him, um, except for like save these windows of like time that you can. Are you saying something like that to where they are just like they are? There's only very very specific and small windows that you can get an attack in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even during those very specific windows where you could hit him, what if you mm-hmm. went in and you're like, oh, it's time for you to get got, Nameless King. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. so you bring in with your cool sword to start fighting him, and then he's just ducking and weaving, ducking and weaving, ducking and weaving. So your combo misses because, ooh, he swerves to the right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You swing with a body slow, he, or like a nice big broad body swing, mid, mid, medium length, mm-hmm. about right as where his chest or waist would be, and he just matrix leans back. Yeah. So See, you, you know what I you know what I felt like every Dark Souls game needs? Every Dark Souls game has the role mechanic, but it needs platforming mechanics. So what if we did a Dark Souls uh-huh, game uh-huh. that had <laughs> Fall Guys style platforming where like you're on like imagine <laughs> imagine you're <laughs> Go, you, well, if wait, it's, if it's on, in the AJ, Dark Souls wait, engine, it would of course be like on, by weight class, right? On. If you were had like heavy armor and you went to do a jump, it would have Fall Guys <laughs> physics of your character tumbling around like wait, a silly Billy. AJ, AJ. But if you had, if you were doing a Nike run, then you can run around and jump and leap like an Assassin's Creed character. What if, what if you did a Dark Souls game where every level is like an you have to like get through an obstacle course to get to the end? <laughs> And then, like, every time you die, you have to start the obstacle course again. And so it's just this irritating fucking fight to get to the boss. And then, like, when you get to the boss, it's and very And then hit easy the boss die. fast enough that it will die, knowing that it is very small, very squirmy, and uh-huh. will duck and weave oh. once you are right there ready to hit it. You know what would be cool? What if you did a thing where, like, each level, it was kind of a puzzle, where you started out each level with a set amount of stamina and health and... And like, um, whatever. So like every swing you take, because if a boss can be killed in one swing, you need to make, and you need to make sure you have enough stamina for that one swing. But going through the obstacle course will require you to sacrifice stamina and health and other things. Well, you also have to make sure that you're able to hit the boss. Again, they are one squirmy little dude. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They are ducking and weaving, dodging, matrix leaning. I think they're doing a backflip. I think all of that loses effect if you're not like if you had if you had unlimited swings, it would just be a matter of time then. I think you need to do a challenging part. Like, going back to Dark Souls 1, I think the biggest issue a lot of people had with it was is the moment you died from a boss, you had to, like, fucking walk forever and uh, dodge enemies and go everywhere. What if you did that, but with, like, the coat of paint of, like, Fall Guys or Wipeout or some other... Or MXC Unleashed for those people (laughs) who remember that wild fucking show from the early 2000s. Um, So you want to create an extreme platformer. mm Mm-hmm. Where you run around and you have to platform to the boss, and then you have a stamina gauge that will deplete over time, like non-refundable stamina bar. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then once you get to the boss, then the mini game of oh, you got to get there before it disappears forever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then once you get there, you have to deal with the mini game of man, I sure do hope he does not dodge my punch because I've only got three before I'm gassed out. Yes, yes. And if you gas out, like maybe your ca- character just croaks over right there, or. Uh, ooh, oh, <laughs> the oh, actually, character lays on the floor for eight minutes. <laughs> um, actually, no, it puts you in a stun, like uh, in Sekiro, where like when you stun a character, they just kind of sit there at daze, and you can just do a finisher move on them. Uh, that's what happens to your character, mm-hmm. and then the boss or whatever AI picks up on that and then kills you because they have an opening now. Um, um yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I just, I just love the idea of like a person in a suit of armor with a big ass, like berserk ass sword. Just going through the colorful world of Fall Guys and having to make sure they don't fall. And you know what you could do? <laughs> you could do just because it would just be so fucking funny to do. It actually has 
the um, lobbies of Fall Guys. So it'll be like you go into the multiplayer. You can go through the campaign and it has its own like obstacle courses and bosses. But then you want to go to the multiplayer mode. Guess what? There's 60 other people wielding giant fucking swords that are competing on this obstacle course <laughs> to get to the end to go fight this boss. And the boss is so squirmy. It's just like a bunch of people swinging swords. And it's all like there's always clipping. There's, and they can all hit each all other. Hit each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And there's just so much. It's just everybody's just hitting one another. And then some lucky son of a bitch lands the killing blow and gets, I don't know, a golden helmet okay. or like they yeah, get a golden sword okay, or something. Okay. I'm into this. <laughs> let's put a pin in this. You got another video game? I idea? do. I do. I do. All right, AJ, this one comes to us on Reddit from Tasty Slime Inc. Grunkle does not stand. A social media manager game where you play as Grunkle Stan from Gravity Falls, fighting against the concept of standing as amongst moral conflicts, it has also ruined your brand online. I think Stan is pissed off that nobody is standing him. Um, which oh yeah 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 we have to we have to put our we'll have to because I, I feel like there's a lot of people who stand Grunkle Stan just as hey, being grunk- it's me Grunkle Stan <laughs> and I'm just so mad that they're standing John Cook and not me <laughs> who's John Cook I don't know who that is uh, he's a K-pop oh guy. I'll oh, be honest okay. I've only gotten his name through osmosis did you say John Cook or Jung Cook. Junk. Oh, I, think. I thought you said John. Okay, it, it must have been our weird tin. The can Grunkle Stan voice is very difficult to enunciate with. I'm sorry, I don't control the Grunkle. <sighs> so, okay, so I'm looking at this story, and I think the thing that pops out to me the most is it opens up with Grunkle Stan being like, "Hey, I need to get social media going for the mystery." Can shack. I get the Grunkle Stan voice from you? Hey, it's me, Grunkle Stan. <laughs> thank you, thank hey, you. Hey, Grunkle you. Stan, can you come over to the mic real quick? Yeah, sure. All right, so I got it. Uh, now I'm just doing a very like probably um, <laughs> insulting Brooklyn accent. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry, Alex <laughs> Hirsch and Brooklyn. <laughs> All right. So Grunkle Stan wants to. Get... God, that bit was bad. <laughs> That so Grunkle Stan wants to get social media for the Mystery Shack. Uh, for those that don't know uh, what Gravity Falls is, it's a small town. Stop listening to this podcast. Go watch it's all of Gravity so Falls. It's so fucking good. Oh man, it's so lovely. It's like it, see, that's also like one of the series. I the, I think the main thing I love about that series it it takes that thing of like guys in love with an unattainable girl, and rather than him just like it working out at the end. It's like, no, he has to just, he just has to realize that that girl is unattainable and it's unhealthy to just like fucking sit there and, and, uh, sorry, what are you talking about? Oh, you're talking about Dipper and, uh, what's her name? Yes. I don't want to. I don't want to say. Okay. I don't want to say the name because then it'll be like. I think it's worth. Yeah, everybody, worth go watch. Yeah. go watch Gravity Falls. It's a great show, filled with lots of lessons. Um, Grunkle Stan hates Stan Twitter because he's not being Stan on Twitter. He wants to get fame for the Mystery Shack. The he, Stan uh, Grunkle Stan, the uncle of the main characters, basically runs this. Uh, like trinket shop that nobody likes to go to and all of the trinkets are like fake cryptid statues and t-shirts and it's just it's a a tourist trap place so he wants to get social media going and enter the digital age and get shit going for his mystery shack i think the thing that stands out to me is i would love to see stan become a k-pop idol (laughs) Okay. I, the idea of Grunkle Stan, he's just like... <laughs> like, that's the new grift. The, the, grift yeah. the new grift is for Grunkle Stan and Seuss to be <laughs> K-pop idols. Oh, you know who actually would be really good K-pop idols in their band? They get the two boyfriend cops, and they're like, they're also part yeah. of the, the... I feel like the two of them would be really down to like be part of the dancing, singing troupe. Oh my god, that'd so be so good. So what we've got here is we've got a, <laughs> we've got a story of four, four incredibly powerful individuals. We've got the two wild, crazy cops from Gravity Falls. Mm-hmm. We've got Grunkle Stan, and we've got Seuss. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, the four of them are going to become K-pop idols. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, there's a couple hurdles in their way. One, they're not traditionally attractive. <laughs> Number two, they're not, they're not Korean teenage boys. <laughs> That's probably the biggest hurdle, huh? <laughs> also, they, uh, actually, no, the biggest hurdle is that they live in the Pacific Northwest, <laughs> not Korea. <laughs> 
Oh, you got a problem with the Pacific Northwest? No, I love the. You got a problem with the Pacific I, Northwest? Because yeah, now I'm here. I love it. Now I'm up in Pacific Northwest territory. If you got beef with us, let me know. All right, we'll hash this out. All right, man. I here. All right, let me ask you. Choose your let words me, carefully. Let me ask, let me ask you. Young let me, man. Let's compare Los Angeles and and the Pacific Northwest. Can you go down the street and get a vegetarian buffalo chicken sandwich from a very expensive? vegetarian eatery in los angeles brother it's 2020 i can't leave my house and neither can you <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> to we the same boat there, huh? <laughs> turns out la so what's and the Pacific game look, like here? look the same when you're stuck inside um okay what does the game look like here i I'm getting the idea that it would be kind of a visual novel-esque thing that has some sort of cutaway gameplay uh, that is either a rhythm or, um, yeah, probably a rhythm game, I would assume. Yeah, a rhythm like game a would of... make sense of Grunkle Stan trying to get, <laughs> trying to pass himself off as mm -hmm. a K-pop idol. It would need to have a rhythm element. To, actually, didn't we do something similar? Like it was a K-pop manager, and then we talked about managing the social media. Because at the end of the day, because I feel like that would take the same elements for this game. Blake, I'm gonna need you to stop referencing old media that we've released because this is a there's a finite <laughs> amount um, of ideas hey. in the world. And when we hit the point of an episode where we've no, no 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 let me finish because this is important. If we hit an episode where we can't go the entire episode without one submission of you being like. Isn't this kind of like this other thing that we've already done? If we hit that point, when we've done every possible idea, we have to close the doors and stop the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. At that I, point, we'll be done. Uh, At that right, point, no, we will no, have no, done no, it no, all. No, so no, I need you to stop you and, looking no, at that you horrible and I possibility are... in the mouth every <laughs> chance we get. <laughs> no, you and I are two big brain fucking smart individuals. I, I, we're fucking also idiots. But you and I got some creativity, dude. I only bring it up because I know you and I have the fucking energy to make something different. I I, I, I I don't I I think there's limitless. I guess are there going to be games where we have like similar energy or like there's going to be similar mechanics? Yeah, like video game platformers have existed forever. You know, like there's there's a million platformers yeah, that yeah, just yeah, do yeah. it slightly differently. You know what I mean? There's a million rhythm games out there. They just do it slightly differently. Like everything's a, a knockoff of Guitar Hero when you think about it. I'm not going to explain that statement, but everything is. <laughs> All right, Blake. Mm hmm. Okay. Where do you so, see this game going, or do you want me to take us to the next one? Uh, let's just let's just give a quick sum up. I don't know if we can go into massive detail about it. I think it is the lesson. It's a rhythm based Stan game, visual novel uh, element. Yeah. You watch Stan and his new band of band members attempt mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. take over K pop Twitter. How about this? Everybody loves a road trip series so they are road tripping uh -huh. to get to new york and then once they're in new they're york they are tour. flying they're flying to korea to do their finale show they're gonna like their whole thing is is like if we're gonna make this and we're gonna get big we have to go up and do it's a battle of the bands against like what's the um the biggest k-pop band right now they just sold like more albums than like uh in this last year uh oh would that be bts BTS, they, they're they going to do a battle of the bands against BTS is the final scene. And it's going to be okay. fucking yeah. wild. I'm into that. Yeah, right, so, there, so there's the bones. And then, you know, visu you know, you have a, a visual novel style where there's a bunch of different routes to get there. Um, maybe and there's it's like a mobile would, I, game. So you can like you tap the screen to make Grunkle Stan and uh, Zeus dance. Uh, you got to okay. tap the correct little things, but it's like a mystery shack thing. And so instead of like X square triangle circle, it's like mm -hmm. exclamation point, question mark, um, semicolon. <laughs> so, all of the rhythm so based funny. iconography is all like mystery shack iconography. <laughs> you know, it'd be so fucking funny. Stan's like, uh, so Seuss and the two cops come up. It's like, hey, where's our RV for touring? He's like, you think I can avoid it? <laughs> and I, no, let me try this again. I don't want to do a bad voice. You think I can afford an RV? He just gets a crane and lifts up the entire mystery <laughs> shack and puts it on the bed of a fucking truck. And then they're just driving the mystery <laughs> shack across the United States. And he's still trying to sell shit. Like, that's like some yeah, of the that rules. <laughs> is him just trying to drum up support for the mystery shack. <laughs> and all of our interludes... Um, because Mabel does that like vlogging thing, right? Where she kind of like does does news reports. Um, all of our like interludes um, are done by Mabel on her like 
you know, quote, newscast. Be like, Grunkle Stan is now mm-hmm. in uh, Mississippi and is getting ready for his tour. And then, you know, the pig comes in and starts chewing on the mic or something. Um, just gets that kind of that cutesy vibe in there, too. Because it'd be weird to do a Gravity Falls game without Mabel and Dipper, huh? <laughs> no, I think it. I think it's the natural order of things. If our story takes <laughs> place in the Pacific Northwest and Mabel and Dipper hit... Maple and Dipper have moved back to California, then they don't have a place in our story. Are you Grunkle Stan's Stan? life goes on beyond them. I am a That's Grunkle true. Stan Stan. And I yeah, think that I'm, I'm from story California. about Grunkle Stan alone is <laughs> the ideal way to continue that series. Wait, 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 no, hold on, hold on. So, like, they came from California to, the, to Oregon to come visit their Grunkle Stan. So when I come up to Oregon to visit you, can I call you Grunkle? Like, Grunkle AJ? I'm visiting for the summer. Okay, sweet. Yeah. I'm visiting for the summer. You will have to do anything (laughs) I tell you, though, because I'll be your grunkle. And I'm bigger Uh, than you. I'll say I'll do it, and then I I just don't. And then you'll 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 participate in hijinks to get yourself out of that work, and you'll end up in your own sitcom problem. I get it. Uh, (laughs) I get the formula. I see it. All right, you got a game, brother? You got a game, grunkle? This comes from Caleb All Day, All Bay, Martin, Isithius. Naughty Dog made three Karash Bandicoot games and one Kart Racer. They made three mm-hmm. Jack and Dexter games and one Kart Racer. What would On Carted have been like? This is, of course, the Uncharted Kart Racing game because they did do three Uncharted games. It's time for that Kart Racer. Caleb did us the grand service of already naming it On Carted. So it is the <laughs> Uncharted Kart Racing video game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now issue it's number n- one, we have very little characters to put in these carts. I think I haven't played an Uncharted game, but I know that we've uh-huh. got the main character, uh, Tom Holland. We've mm-hmm. got uh, Tom Holland's oh, fuck, that's older right, yeah. brother. Nathan Drake, that's the name of the character. Nathan yeah. Drake is... Yeah, I've played all I of the I can remember the character's game. name, so I just went for the actor of the soon-to-be live-action version. I, it worked for me. It we've worked, got Nathan Drake. I think we've got Nathan Drake's crazy grunkle. I believe we've also got Nathan Drake's <laughs> brother? And then I think that we've got Nathan Drake's girlfriend, and then his mean not-girlfriend. I think that's mm-hmm. the only five characters I know from the Uncharted games. Also, aren't there, like, monsters and demons that could be... On the car, because I remember in the first one, he went up against when he was like climbing through a ship that got uh, that crashed on land. He was going up against like ghouls or something. It's like humans that have been sitting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the of course, dark of course, someone. the Uncharted ghouls. Hey, yeah, real so, quick, temp- uh, temperature check. Have you played Uncharted? I've played the first one, but I played it uh, eight years ago, maybe nine years ago. All right, cool. Because yeah. I've never played an Uncharted <laughs> game. And you know what? I think this, <laughs> this is exactly the no, spirit no. we need for the cart racer. <laughs> All right. So it's not it's not a game. It's a game of what we think Uncharted is. So I know there's, yes, 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 I know yes. there's paranormal elements in the Uncharted series. Because like, I remember, like I think it's in the second or third game, there's like a coin... And there and there's like a sarcophagus where they fight like a spirit. So I'm just saying it doesn't need to be limited to human characters. There can now, definitely can the sarcophagus be... be a racer. You bet it can because it's just a sarcophagus laying on its side with wheels underneath it. And then like when he activates his boost, they just <laughs> swing the coffin open and like just like lean up and they're just like screaming, claws barred, and all this cool <laughs> shit. They're just like yeah, dude. Like no, there's like there's some potential there. There's totally some potential there. Um, <laughs> now here's the here's the other thing one thing that I know about the Uncharted games and that is it's that because a it is a video game. game by Naughty Dog it accidentally slides into the it slides into accidentally the cheeky murder hobo archetype which is to say a character that we are told is a good and just and moral character even though you've just gone through five levels of mowing down every possible living breathing thing yeah video games are weird which like means that because <laughs> video games are weird. Here's the I, uh-huh. answer. Mm-hmm. All of our cool power-ups for this kart racer game, they're just take. guns, aren't they? Yeah, but you also have to, hey, you Blake, have to kill other racers to get them. We accidentally made Twisted Metal again, didn't we? No, no. I actually I have a way that we can fix this. I have a way that we can fix this. 
So all, all of right, our D-twisted trailers. twisted metal this because right now I have a cart <clears throat> racer where you just get a bunch of guns and you shoot each Hold other. Hold on, AJ, 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 my, my sweet summer child, I have the solution for us. One of the big things that people talk about with the Uncharted series is how cinematic they are. They did a whole like line of commercials being like where it was like the couple watching, uh, like one person is watching the other person play the game and they're like, wow, this is an amazing movie. And then the guy is like, uh, I'm playing a game. And it's so it's it has to be cinematic. It's kind of loses to, hey, some. Hey Blake, cin- legally, yeah? I need to understand before you take another step. I'm seeing where you're going. Are you about to introduce the Fast and the Furious characters into this game? No, 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 no. Uh, that's a good DLC though. That's a great DLC. Let's keep that in our back pocket. Okay. What I'm saying is, check our it's work. a whole okay. all of our What's trailers look amazing, and they're just like, oh man, I can't wait to like get just hit the pavement and hit the dirt and just drive, and like I can't wait to see the mechanics of driving. Um, it's all it's all a time event, AJ. There's no actual. You have no control over the car. It's just how good are you at doing time events? Because Uncharted, if I remember correctly, is fucking riddled with those. In those scene of those, uh, what do they call them? Call of Duty's really uh, bad at them. Uh, roller coaster or coaster? Time events? No, there's like a slang for it of like you are locked in place. Um, a railway segment, I believe, is what they're called. Um, ah. where you kind of just, ha- you are, you have no control over your character. You just need to nail time events. How disappointing would it be that this game looks like it's so much fun and you market it as a driving game, but there are no driving mechanics to be had and you just have to make sure you <laughs> press the button. You have to make sure you press a button at the right time, I guess, to just go faster or whatever. Yes, and it's just... the on-carded <laughs> racing game is just quick time events. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, man, it looks so good. It's like it's like, it looks like an Uncharted game. There's like it's like photorealistic characters. All of the effects are there. The gunfire is awesome. The sound design is amazing. And you're like, man, I wish I could just take the fucking reins on this. And then you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Actually, you know, I, be, here's my question: Would it still be a party racer? Uh-huh. Like, like in the way that a lot of those like kart racing games are like party games? Could we turn this into a party based quick time competition game? You could because there will be segments of the and, race where like two cars mm-hmm. come together and they're like grinding. It then it becomes like one of those quick time events where like say you and I are racing and our cars are locked and we're trying to run each other off the road. You and I, who can press A the fastest and the longest? So whoever lasts longer is basically the one who succeeds and runs the other one off the road. And when they run the other one off the road, they get a power up that they can then use later on in the race. I have so it'll an, be like I have one more little wrinkle I would like to throw in here. Hell yeah. Do it. You and I, our carts, our carts start rubbing against each other. We get put into a quick time event where we each have to pee, be mashing A, and whoever mashes A quicker and longer wins. Here's mm-hmm. the one wrinkle. The game yeah. already knows who wins. Nothing oh, we no. are ever going to do. <laughs> None of the quick times we will ever participate in actually affect the direction oh, of the no. race or the story. Oh. We oh, will so... market it that they totally do. All of the like flavor text on the back of the box, all of the ad campaigns will be like, it's a different race every time. It's not. <laughs> it's not a different race every time. <laughs> it's the same race, the same story, the same events happen every single time. Hey, everybody. Uh, sorry, I think we just experienced a little bit of a technical difficulty. I think we just lost like the past two minutes of our recording, but it's a game uh, that is constant, same outcome. Um, and when we introduce the Fast and the Furious people, it doesn't change the game at all. It just... Yeah, we have DLC for the Fast and the Furious characters. It doesn't change the game at all either. The <laughs> whole game, completely scripted. <laughs> it's a movie. With a bunch of quick time events, with the that illusion that having anything. your friends play it with you will change it. <laughs> the illusion of choice. Bethesda would be proud, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think Bethesda would be super proud. Let's talk about another game. Yeah, you got another video game for me? I do, I do, I do. This one comes to us from a previous guest of ours, Jupiter's Secret Tweets at Jupiter from Hell. It's been 12 years, and it's finally time in 2021 to compete with Minecraft. Make the block-based survival building game that will finally topple Minecraft. Um, also, Caleb Alday uh, 
it replied, it would need something that Minecraft doesn't have. You know what that thing is, triangles. So what if we do, because like AJ, the whole retro It's interesting that the is... direction that you thought was triangles, because I had a very different idea for what Minecraft needs and doesn't have. What? physics okay i was about to say aj because I, <laughs> I know you and i were talking about it earlier in the episode if you were going to say spheres i was going to be like hey we've already done we've that. already done that and i know that much <laughs> god so we're getting so close dodged, like we're gonna hit the point if we've taken every joke we possibly could imagine <laughs> oof Maybe no, no. You and I are fine. You and I just need to play more games, man. We just gotta diversify ourselves. It's all good. All right. It's so physics. You're thinking physics okay, is the thing that Minecraft is missing. Mm-hmm. How would you apply that? A big hammer. I don't know, dude. Like, there's all <laughs> sorts of ways that you can have physics. What I'm you gotta, saying if is you're like, gonna if pitch I see something, you gotta you've have a follow up, bro. <laughs> So you you've built Minecraft. Okay. You've played Minecraft. We've all played love, Minecraft. It's yeah, been twelve ever, years. It's the one game we've all played. I mm -hmm, can build mm -hmm. a big castle and like build a big big dirt tower, just mm -hmm. like eighty feet tall worth of dirt. Mm -hmm. I want to take that and then say, "Nice cool tower of dirt you have there, Blake. Mm -hmm. I've got a funny hammer, a really big funny hammer. And if I hit your tower of dirt with my big funny hammer, it's all gonna tumble down." Hey, I hate, you know, uh, TNT does that just the same, bro. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because TNT, well, TNT kind of has what I'm talking about. TNT mm -hmm. will destroy the blocks that it destroys, but all of the, all of the dirt in the sky ab out of the TNT's range will mm -hmm. destroy, will like, oh, it you're will saying stay. It'll, it'll, lose completely stay. it'll lose structural integrity and fall into itself. That kind of physics. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm looking for structural oh. integrity. I'm looking for gravity. I'm looking for the idea that I can walk into my friend's home knowing that I've got nothing but a big hammer and it triggers the same part of my brain that playing, uh, what was that? War, mm -hmm. Red Faction Guerrilla. Oh, where I go shit. into a building with a rock. big hammer and I say, I can tear the whole place down. Okay, so how do you translate that into a game that isn't Minecraft? Because you also have to do the building mechanics there. Are because Oh, the this same thing. The same building mechanics. I think the two big differences would be that, one, things don't necessarily have to fit on the grid in the same way that they do currently. Mm. And two, you have a big hammer. <laughs> and okay. you can build big hammers and build like wrecking balls and things like that. Everything is mm -hmm. still square. They just mm -hmm. don't stack up in the same way. It's kind of like, you know how like you work on Windows and you have your desktop and it's all nice because everything organizes to a super nice grid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you open up a Mac and you can put those things wherever you want and make it look like an absolute trash disaster. See, you know, you know what this is tapping into and you might be on to something. There was this big... I wouldn't say big, but there was like this little um, pop-up thing that happened in L.A. They're called Rage Rooms, where you would pay like $40, $50, $100. And what they would do is, is they would put you in a bunch of safety gear, like gloves, goggles, mask, uh, a big hoodie. And then they'd put you alone in a room with a fucking sledgehammer. And they would just bring you things to destroy, like a TV, a cabinet, mm -hmm. a bed frame, whatever. So what I'm say what I'm thinking here is it is the simplicity of Minecraft's creative mode. So it's like you don't have to collect resources, you have unlimited everything, and you can craft whatever you want, and then it, it's and then you can either go in and destroy it yourself. There's a bunch of like, there's the hammer, but there's also like de uh, uh, detonative or what's it called? Like C4, like trigger like explosives that you can plant and then trigger all at once. But the thing that makes this a little bit more interesting is anything you create can be put out for everyone else and they can just have fun going through the, this art exhibit that they can then interact with by destroying it. So is it, it like it kind of has this very cathartic sort of like rage room vibe of like, hey, there's something really beautiful over there. I want to just like see it cave in on itself. Um, yeah. And that, that, sound, like, that sounds a little you know, fucked like, up, make, but like, I, I, I feel like everybody has that temptation. In Minecraft you know? so much more appealing, right? What if you were mm -hmm. going into Minecraft and you're like, oh, I'm starting out Minecraft. I got to. I got to start chopping down trees. And you walk over mm. and you hit the bottom block of a tree and the whole thing topples over. 
Oh, okay. So I I was saying we don't have to collect resources to build. It's just a build destroy mechanic. But you're saying like no, it would, I'm eating Minecraft's want... whole lunch. We can have a creative <laughs> mode. We can have a survival <laughs> mode. We can uh, have uh. everything that Minecraft has. We're just also mm. adding in physics. How cool would it be? And stick with me. Stick with me really quick. What if we make it a battle royale? And stick with me for a second, because one of my favorite fucking things when I I was watching Yogg's cast, and I know that's a name that hasn't been thrown around in a long time, but they were like one of the OG like Minecraft people, and they were so big that they actually t- made one of the first Minecraft narrative series and told this whole like overarching story within Minecraft, uh, The Shadow of Israfel. Mm-hmm, Never mm-hmm, finished, mm-hmm. which is a bummer, but uh, they did this one game with a bunch of other YouTubers where they actually loaded into in an abandoned city map that's from the Hunger Games, and it was a battle royale of them having to hunt each other down in this abandoned city Hunger Games style. What if you did a battle royale where 100 people load in, have to have 30 minutes to build the map um, or fortify themselves, and then the battle royale begins? So, But it's also all physics-based. So, like, if you find some explosives, you can plant those around a person's house. And physics-style, you can make all of the pillars go out and it'll cave in on itself. Or um, I love this I love this PvP system that you've created, but I don't know that Battle Royale is the way to go about it. And here's the mm-hmm. big reason why. I think that Battle Royale lacks stakes. Part of the joy of Battle Royale is that you load in, you fight some people, you win or you lose, and then you move on mm-hmm. to the next thing. Mm-hmm. But you know what never has felt like it lacked stakes? What? Dark Souls. Now, follow along. <laughs> Dark Souls has an incredible system wherein you can summon your f- homies <laughs> and your friends to help you assist you in a boss fight. It does uh-huh. have one mm, if you load into the internet and you access the online features. It has another little system that is the pits. And that is invaders. Mm-hmm. Now, so what you're if when oh. you built your Minecraft world and you had a mm-hmm. server with all of your friends and all of your homies and you've activated the online Minecraft mode so that you can share a wonderful space with your friends, you've also <laughs> unlocked a new it. thing that came with it. You've unlocked the invader system. I, I hate to break it to you, but this and just sounds any... like public. This just sounds like public servers where PvP and destruction is okay. You're right. Minecraft. You're right, Blake. But now we've but now we've allowed it into a space where it's mandatory. It's if you play online with your friends, then somebody mm-hmm. else in the world can make the, the Enderman Portal Two or the Stinkman's Portal. And if you mm-hmm. use the Stinkman's Portal, you'll invade a random server where you can then go in and do as much damage as humanly possible. Okay. If you so invade somebody's you world, that? you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get resources, right? If I went into somebody, if I use the stink man's portal and I enter somebody else's server, I'm looking around. Ooh, where's they diamonds? Where's they emeralds? Where mm. is those good so you're things basically, that you're, I want you're to raiding. You're like you're a pirate, basically, just going in to a yes. settlement and raiding it. Interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, okay, okay. But I can destroy and... the entire place if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I've been set free inside of somebody else's world, and we know how satisfying destroying things is in this game. It's building with stakes because it could be like, you know, it'd be kind of funny. It would you do a thing of like that ability for somebody to, or I want to ask you, does that ability happen when you have more than one person on your server, or is can it happen if it's just you alone in your own world? You can only be invaded by the stink man's portal if you have multiple people in your world. Ah, uh, so the, if it, then it becomes like a defense. Because uh, yeah, because I don't, I don't want, I don't want to do anything cool. too malicious. I don't want the stink man to invade a server <laughs> when everyone's asleep. I only stink want the stink man to invade when the stink man can be stopped. Mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. I want, I want the little notification to be like, you have an invader, and mm-hmm. everybody on the server is like, stop. Hold on, and wait. You know, We've see, built that's cool. an entire castle. We know that there's an invader here. We just don't know where they are at in this whole world. You can here be the invaded. Other two here's things. the thing. No, no, no. When you thing. invade you as a stink man, you invade naked. You don't have anything, so you have to build from the ground up all of the destructible, all of the destructive capabilities you could get in the game. Now, I disagree we know with that. Minecraft I... is a 
You think I, that somebody should be able to walk in nuke yeah. strapped to the nines with yes. hammers and mallets and nukes? Yes, and here's why. So basically they can it's like you do the system of the hunt showdown. It's like whatever you bring with you, you it's permadeath. So if you die with these things, you lose them. And that's the reward uh, for the okay. players de- okay. defending their like their area. So one, they get a big XP boost or whatever if they manage to kill like a, an invader or a group of invaders because i feel like you can make you can start doing teams where it'll be like yeah you can invade with a team of three and you can always do that but there's you can have as oh, many the stink man raids this is gonna yeah. blow up on the twitch community yeah well actually it reminds me there's another youtuber i watched occasionally where he just makes this really tightly edited like content of like um, he just does heists in games. It'll be like, hey, I'm playing, I think it's Rust or some or Ark. And he's like, yeah, there are these, there's this group of like, um, there's this team, this like this clan that has like a giant tower and each level of the tower has a bunch of gear in it. And it's like, a, it's like a, a, a clan of like people from around the world. And he's like, I'm going to break in and I'm going to steal all of their shit without them knowing. And he just edits it. Like it's a 1970s heist thing. This feels exactly like that. It'll be like, Hey, we're going to gear up. What do you think we need? Um, there's no way to know, or maybe you could do There's a thing no way of to like, know what they're going to invade. Maybe mm-hmm. they invade into somebody and they've spent the they've spent years building up a complete fortress that's impenetrable. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. maybe they load in into some like little grade schoolers that just started out Minecraft mm-hmm. too, and they're just like, "Oh boy, I do sure do hope that nobody invades and moiters me." No, how about this? How about this? And how about this? The invaders Each... just strapped up with TNT and knives. N- how about murder. this? We take a we take a little bit of um out of the Metal Gear Solid Five playbook where because one of the mechanics they had in that game is you can uh you have the mother base and you can like deck out the mother base with soldiers you've met along your campaign with weapons artillery um whatever and that contributes to your mother base's overall rating and when people okay you you can actually go in and invade other people's mother bases um to steal supplies and i think also just as like extra levels let's say um but it you can see how hard that mother base will be as you build up your community and your server or your world it'll increase its overall rating and that's the only thing people get when they can choose which world to invade that way they get a general idea of like uh, oh the this Stink is a Man's th- portal can be upgraded yeah. so they can invade a higher uh, allegedly a higher ranked place yes like let's say there's like stars one through five so like a person mm. just beginning has no stars they have no equipment they have no settlements they have no nothing that equates to a zero star but the moment you get like a settlement going that uses x amount of material or it starts to generate x amount of money it becomes a one star and then so on and so forth until being like yeah, if you have a yeah, clan yeah. that if if you have a server that has people from a different continents around the world and is making x amount of money and is like basically a fortified castle or fortress or city that's when it becomes a five star and that's when you know like um that'll also dictate what gear people can bring when they're invading you can't bring a dozen things of c4 when you're invading is a one star place that's just it's overkill they like certain gear is only accessible to certain tiers of invading that yeah, way it just kind of keeps that. things a little bit keeps things a little bit level and keeps things like okay it's like uh it's like i mean not it keeps it fair and balanced i get you yeah yeah, yeah. i follow yeah so something, right, so something like that yeah what's up we got to pick a nug what are you feeling what are you feeling the nug is brother uh, can I get a little bit of a little sampler? Mm, what do we what have we created here today? I remember so, we created Minecraft, but with physics and ver- and PvP invader system. Mm-hmm. We created Uncarded. We've created. <laughs> we uh, created what else uh, was the st- the uh, Grunkle stands. Uh, Grunkle doesn't stand. Grunkle stands yeah. stand game, and we mm-hmm. created Dark Souls, but if it had very wiggly bosses and sixty players all trying to hit them. I think that one's the one. <laughs> that one fall fall is guys very dark good. souls <laughs> i don't know just the idea of a bunch of people cuz i don't think i've seen that admittedly a bunch of people competing to get through a level to smack one and thing. the only su- yeah the only successful only the successful people that got through the platform can take on the final boss like that 
that feels cool. That feels like competitive. That feels just like sporadic, like Fall Guys. It, like that's the, everything I love about Fall Guys. But of course, we'll have more maps so people don't get bored of it. And what a I month. love about <laughs> what I love about this concept is it is so easily abusable. Because so? if we've created a game where we've rigged people up with all their cool Dark Souls things, and they ju- and we just say there's sixty of y'all go fight the boss, somebody's mm-hmm. just going to start swinging right at the beginning and say, I'm just going to mortalize oh, murder. Oh, shit. I'm just going to mortalize everybody here. Oh, my God. That'll be like, there are people in, in Fall Guys that do that, where they, like, grab you, and then they they hold on to you, and then, like, when they let go of you, there's, like, a slight chance that you'll bounce off of them, and that's how people get other yeah. people to fall off the map. And I'm wondering if you just did that. I just it would bring out so much evil in people. <laughs> it would. It would be I think so that what we're bad. doing is we're t- taking so all of, we're taking bad. the worst things about Dark Souls, right? <laughs> trying to hit an enemy that's uh, really wiggly, trying to like engage in PVP, and of course mm-hmm. the platforming of Dark Souls. All of those things mm-hmm. that are notoriously the worst parts of that franchise <laughs> and just shoving them all into one horrible bottle. <laughs> and I uh, you know what? I'm looking at it. Uh-huh. I hate this. We I need to create it. it. It needs to be put in the world. <laughs> what are we going to name this? Um. Okay, so let's combine, like, there's, okay, there's, uh, let's look at, like, all the famous ones. Um, MXC Unleashed, Wipeout, Fall Guys, Dark Souls. So what if we do something like, it has, like, a sportsy vibe to it. So how can you make Dark Souls... Maybe we don't even. Maybe we just drop the Dark Souls. It's not even a Dark Souls game. It's just our own little like obstacle course game. Might I propose to you this? What's that? Demon Souls. No apostrophe on demons. <laughs> Hold on. Wait. Joke. Redact that joke. Yeah, it was a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait. Actually, no. This lens. Sorry, I was. I was gonna say redact because I thought that there was a. There maybe I was re- misremembering. But the game that currently exists is Demons Souls with an uh-huh. apostrophe to, of the possessive of the demons. But what if it's not possessive demons souls? It is plural demons souls. <sighs> No. Because there's just so many little demons no. that we've created into no. this little space. What are you talking right, about? Fine. Like, <laughs> Okay, here about, how about this? How about this? Let's take a break on title. Let's look at some bosses from our Patreon boss fight, and then we can come up with the title. How about that? Okay, that's fair. <laughs> this one is very specific. This one comes from Gazer. Um, they say, a middle-aged suburban dad for whom Blade Runner was a formative experience in his teens. And the idea of a boss being a dad, but he just is like dressed like he's cyberpunk. He's just trying to be cyberpunk. I think would be very fun. Oh, and he's like fit because like he he saw cyberpunk and he's like, oh man, that actor that plays as Han Solo is so fit in this. I want to be fit and (laughs) athletic like him forever. So he just started working out all the time. Thank you, Harrison Ford. (laughs) I love you, man. You're so so funny, dude. And and so the dad's like, I'm going to be as fit and cool as Harrison Ford forever uh-huh. <laughs> and so like you get in there and that that is a boss that's gonna just, be able to duck and weave just and jump back dad. and spin just kick fucking... and dodge roll oh my god that'd be super cool and he also like he has like he's just dressed up like deckard from blade runner he's like yeah this is <laughs> yeah it's, it's like i actually like when you approach him he's like this is uh these are actual props from the set that i've invested in i had them custom fitted to me um, it smells like Harrison Ford. Just like that. Just that one sentence is like a little bit weird. You're like, all right, this guy needs to. This guy. This guy's a little weird. Uh, and then you have to go into the boss fight. And maybe his thing is, is that he quick draws. So like we've been talking about like our our characters, all of them wielding swords. I think it would be kind of cool that they go up against this kind of cowboy s character. That when they shoot him, they kind of maybe are like stunned. So, like, I don't think, it, I don't want, I want to avoid the physics thing where they're, like, blown back and off of the map. Um, yeah, or but they're stunned, but I, which makes them incredibly susceptible to being harmed by the other, other players. By other players. So, yeah, so, like, Harrison Ford's character will just be, like, 
he just like draws like uh, the dad will just yeah, draw cyberpunk, the, um... cyberpunk dad does not harm the players specifically he just makes it makes every player so easily defeatable by other players uh-huh uh-huh awesome i like that and Cyber, you know what he could cyberpunk do? cyberpunk oh. dad just wants to prove that all of you could be just as bad as he is you all just are waiting for the opportunity pew pew you still there i got another boss fight for you well, actually, I want to I want to add one quick thing. Yeah, to the, can you to not Deckard. hear me? So, no, I can hear you. I can hear you. Um, basically, okay. when players approach him, uh, because I feel like if if people can get through the line of the of the gunfire, they can get to Deckard really close. His second attack is is that he does a cool fucking spin, and his trench coat like works like a broom, and it just sweeps everybody around him and causes them to like also get stunned or maybe push back. So they like, and also everybody's clipping, so anybody who gets pushed back gets pushed into other people who are then pushed back as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, what you got? This comes from Joe on our Discord. Adamesk, the Pirate King. Now, this I imagine is a little bit like the <laughs> Nameless King, the giant, the giant character on the knight on the cool dragon. And uh-huh, you know what? Uh-huh. Now that I'm reading it and thinking about it and talking to you, I'm realizing that this might be a fully coolie reference, isn't it? That is that is totally fully coolie reference. But the no wait, AJ, you're onto something though because okay, wait, really quickly, what form of Adamesk are we using? The one that in that inhibits our main character's body where he's dual wielding guitars and uses those as a weapon or is it the giant bird dragon thing because i think that's his actual form it's the giant bird dragon thing it's adamus the giant bird dragon (laughs) oh but actually here can i do you one better um it's a giant bird dragon but in his beak instead because like in dark souls you have that wolf that carries a sword in its mouth you have this giant dragon that carries a guitar in its mouth and that's its weapon a giant, it's a giant dragon it's bird like, it's with a, a guitar it's a, in its mouth. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Gibson S no, it's a Gibson E B zero bass guitar. No, uh Tetsuo. It doesn't matter the kind name, of right? guitar, Blake. No, no, it, it, no, 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 no. It totally matters to the guitar. If we're if we're doing Atomusk, it's a very specific guitar. And if as far if I remember correctly, it's a Gibson E B zero S G guitar. A cherry red. And oh fuck, that guitar, dude. I that's like that. That guitar actually made me want to learn to play guitar. <laughs> now this boss this is so cool. That's very cute, very nerdy. I love you very much. <laughs> now right, this well, boss right. I'm imagining is a much more like field of effect. I've got to stay away from the bad things type of game thing, right? Like mm-hmm. the bird's gonna swing down with its really, 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 really big left wing and just destroy mm-hmm. the entire left half of the arena so all of the players have to run to one side. This one will feel a little bit more like obstacle-y, a little more fall guysy. just trying to make sure that you're not where you're going to get destroyed by the boss before the boss mm-hmm. finally does come down and show its tiny, tiny weak spot. The weak spot is, of course, the guitar. Oh, okay. And then the guitar it's the like, one thing vulnerable on a giant bird dragon's body is, of course, the <laughs> guitar that it holds in its beak. <laughs> All right, so then if you destroy the guitar, this giant bird dragon just becomes useless and flies away, and it's considered defeated. And yeah, you've won. and I love the <laughs> idea of, like, this giant, giant boss with, like, two giant wings that is willing to close down the arena, and you end up funneling in the last 20 or so characters into one itty-bitty tiny spot so they can try to smack it with their cool swords. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dude, okay, dope. That's it. I like it. <gasps> you know, what'd be also really fucking cool is like he slams the guitar down, and like a bunch of like necks of guitars sprout from the ground, causing people to get fired up. Like they just like it just hits somebody, and then they just oh, they all get launched into up the, into the air. Yeah, they launch like into that. the air, and then like and then maybe as a combo that the, the uh, Adamus will just swing the guitar and bat them off of the map, and they just die. Um, or those characters come crashing down, landing on whoever's below them. <laughs> It's just, I'm trying yeah. to create this just, this fucking hell of a final boss battle area. Yeah, th- oh, this God, boss that... will definitely take advantage of, like, kind of throwing people into each other and causing the characters to ragdoll and tumble around, which is very oh. fun for a giant bird dragon. Yeah. <laughs> Blake, we do still need a name for our video game. Is Runner's High anything? Oh my god, that's such a good name, actually! AJ, you just hit it on the fucking head! Runner's High! For those that don't know, Runner's High is like a, a song from the Fooly Cooly soundtrack, and it's very good. Is um, it? I was Runner's thinking about the fact that like when you're uh, Runner's High is that like moment of euphoria that joggers allegedly hit. 
Yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah, that's um, I believe okay. that's where they got the name of the, the song title. But yeah, Runner's High. It was uh from. I actually, didn't know I that there the was a track in Fully Cooley called too. Runner's High. Hell yeah, that rules. Yep, yep. There we go. And that's the song that fucking plays when you go up against Adamus. That or I believe I can because that. Oh, now hey AJ, can that we just track launch? Rules. Hey AJ, can you and I just do like a Patreon extra where we like each we did we do like a six episode mini series where each episode we talk about an episode from Fooly Cooly because it's only six episodes and it's like one of the best fucking animes ever. <laughs> I'll tell you I what, know, just... when we hit the inevitable episode where we're unable to go an entire episode. <laughs> When we hit the inevitable episode where we're unable to do anything without referencing a previous episode, and so we know that we've d- done all of the possible jokes we can imagine, and we have to close down the doors, then we'll do our six-episode special on Fooly Cooly. <laughs> a treat for ourselves for doing a good job of being original It will be and our creative. swan song for, for leaving the podcast world in shame. <laughs> I was thinking more along the lines of uh, Paul Blart 2, or what's that one thing where they get together once a year and l- watch Paul Blart 2? Till Death 2, Do Us Blart. And they just make a podcast episode about it. What's that series? I think it's just called Paul Blart 2, That right? would be Till Death Do Us Blart, which is a very yeah. good show. <laughs> All right, are we ready for patch notes? Yeah, let's go to patch notes. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Patch Notes. As always, thank you all so much for checking out this podcast. Blake and I have an absolute blast doing it every single week. And if you want to be a little bit more involved with the show, Blake has the perfect piece of advice for you. <laughs> Check us out on Twitter at Spiritual Suck. That's Suck with two C's. I know it's a genius name. AJ did a very good job with that one. Um, where we post uh, basically post every day doing arts doing thank you doing trailers uh, actually we have um actually this comes out on tuesday so if you want to actually see our game trailers early um you can actually check it out on monday where we post it uh, specifically on twitter and if you want to get it even sooner you can also check us out on patreon at spiritual successor and of course twitter is one of the best places that you can use to interact with the show and give us your submissions so that they can make it onto this recording right now with that being said i think that we're going to go ahead and wrap this show up today as always our intro and outro song is cheap shop by anna monaguchi an excellent song from an excellent band for an excellent game i have been your host aj hart and i have been your other host blake Rea. watch fully cooly <laughs> this has been spiritual successor <laughs> And these that are cool games. That should not be made. <laughs>